My cheapest Boston whaler in the country. Is this a basket case? Did I get myself in over my head? Or is this a project totally worth undertaking that I can do something great with? The honeymoon is over. There are so many boats that are not worth fixing up because you'll never get back what you put into it, money and time-wise. But a Boston Whaler is a different story. I've been working on educating myself a little bit more about these Boston Whalers, and my gut was right. I mean, these are desirable, popular boats, and old ones seem to be able to fetch a higher price than a lot of other older boats. And there's a lot of them still around because they were unsinkable. But whenever one's gotten to be in the condition this one is, it's a big, big project. And because I got this one so cheap, it's not necessarily something where I'd make a ton of money, but you're also not losing money like you would be with so many other boats. So it's not a bad project. It just is probably a bad project for me at this time. Let's really take a good inventory and assessment of what's wrong with this boat, what needs to be fixed and addressed. One of the things that some people said to do with these whalers is drill a couple holes in it. How waterlogged is this actually? Maybe it's not that bad. So one of the first places we're gonna drill is right down here. Well, no water poured out. That's a good thing. Let's try another spot. So I'm under the middle of the boat right now, and you can see there is water right here. And now here's another spot. You can see right here where water is seeping out. Well, that was very disappointing. I was hoping to see water gushing out of the hull of this boat. So I know this boat has led a long, hard life, at least some of its years were in service as a work boat to work on and service Mr. Trash Wheel, a contraption that's designed to remove trash from the harbor in Baltimore. Because of the hard life it led, there's a lot of scars and a lot of damaged areas that either were fixed poorly or completely need to be addressed. Here's an example of one of the areas that I believe was repaired poorly or incorrectly. And there's several of these throughout the whole entire boat. But as you can see, this is weeping water. So we're on the side of the boat and water is weeping out of these places right here. And that's because this area is probably patched or filled with something that wasn't appropriate. What I'm seeing here just tells me that everything in here needs to come out. Back here on the transom, you can see how all of this has been patched. You can see where there's been some you know, fiberglass or something laid on here that's been sanded and ground down very coarsely and then painted. So this gunnel here has all been repaired because it has just been patched up over the years just to sort of keep things afloat. You can see where all of this is cracking through. You can see a crack right up here at the bow where some of this has been repaired improperly. See, so this here almost looks like an art project that somebody did. This isn't even the original, uh, I think the original piece was brass that went through these. This is just a piece of steel that somebody replaced it with. A lot more work 
very rough looking patches, as you can see right up here in the bow. So we're right below the rub rail. All of this is, we've got a terrible repair along here. A lot more damage over here. And look here underneath, oh, ow. <laughs> so up here under this, this rub rail, you can see where it's all split away. Here's another old patch job here. This one seems to be holding up okay. But here's another area that isn't, and it's weeping. And then as we get underneath, as you see, there's some very, very rough patch jobs. So that one's not weeping. And underneath here, we have several areas where there is bad patch jobs, peeling paint. As you can see underneath the back of the boat, we've got multiple patches underneath of here. And many of these patches look terrible. inside of here, all of this needs to be stripped down. We've got more things that are just old patches that are coming apart. Bubbling paint. Just problematic areas. Heck, my, my rod holder isn't even very good. So right here are six holes where probably an original center console was mounted. These holes don't seem like they were filled in very well. So water came through there. You can see three other holes right here and then a large patch over there and another large patch over here. And this one is actually split away. <laughs> Literally, look at the water coming out of here. You can see an area here that's painted gray where there was another large hole and other patches. Same is true on this side over here and right up through here. You can see how the paint is shinier right here where somebody put something over top of this area as they were you know, fixing some holes and some leaks. The deck here is spongy, implying that it's too thin right there and there's no support. You can see another patch right here. And here's another hole. This is right through the fiberglass. And you can see how the deck is spongy right here as well. The floor of this boat is in such a state that it may be what prevents me from repairing this boat. So these boats are foam filled and that's part of what made them unsinkable. However, the foam in this boat is approximately 50 some odd years old and has gotten wet a lot. And that's the real problem because it's not just wet foam that's in there, which needs to be probably removed and replaced, is that there's also wood in these boats. And that's something that I did not know. But whalers from this era, and they may not be made this way anymore, have plywood underneath of this flooring. And they also have plywood stringers that run across the floor. And there's a tube that connects your front compartment to your back compartment. And that tube is for running things like your fuel lines, electrical, and I imagine to let water from the bow travel to the, the stern. And those tubes apparently also can give away and crack and fall apart and deteriorate. So if my tube is deteriorated, my floor is bad, the foam is bad, and the wood stringers are bad, this becomes a complete gut job. I just, I look at this boat and I realize it's too big of a job for me. I'm not a young man and I don't have a great space to be able to work on this. 
it's outside in my yard and that's the best I can do. If I was a 30 year old guy and I had an indoor place to be able to work on this that was climate controlled, yeah, I could be the guy to bring this thing back and I'd have a heck of a boat because I have some really neat ideas, but I'm not that guy. Would you take on a project like this? Would you really take on a project like this, especially if you had to work outside and you only had a few months out of the year that you could really work on it? As I think about the hundreds of hours worth of work it'll take to bring this boat back, between my other projects and all the other things going on in my life, it would probably take me a few years to be able to bring this boat back. I'm sure many of you are going to be disappointed that I'm not taking on this project and starting to rip things apart and restoring this Boston Whaler. And I get it, because that would be fun to watch. But I know my limitations and I know when I'm in over my head. I've had some other people who have already reached out to me who are interested in this boat. And that's part of the reason why I bought this, because they're popular. People like these. And if somebody else has the resources, the tools, the time, the space, the money to be able to do this boat properly or improperly, doesn't matter. If they have those things, I would rather see them getting this thing back in the water. But this is not the end of the line for this boat. Oh no, it's not the end of the line. There's going to be more to come with this boat. So, you know, be sure to stay tuned. And until that time, check out this video right here, because it's a good one. Watch this one next.